Hey guys, today we're going to talk about visual note taking. Some people also call this bullet notes and other people like to call this doodling, doodle notes. Uh, the most important function of class notes should be for the note taker to recall and understand what was said. So it makes sense to allow students to take notes in a way that is meaningful to them regardless of what the teacher thinks. If we need to evaluate whether notes are useful to the student, ask the student to repeat the lecture back using his or her own, note, own notes. This is from Rachel Smith. Uh, I will insert a TED Talks about what she has to say about this. She's a wonderful one to listen to about visual note taking. Now, oftentimes when students take notes, uh, we or they write everything they hear down and hope to figure the concepts out later. That's not what we should be doing during visual notes. We should be able to listen to the information and be able to understand it and just create type of memory. Visual note taking forces the student to comprehend the subject and process information just at a deeper level. There's a substantial body of research on visual language and visual literacy. For example, there are two professors, researchers at Princeton University and the University of California, Los Angeles, and they found that writing notes longhand, writing them out, was way more effective for understanding and retaining, remembering that information than to students that uh, started typing their notes. When we write by hand, this forces you guys to pay attention and to really think about what you're doing. There's a lot of effort going into actually writing things out. So when you type, you tend to just turn into a robot and go verbatim. Um, writing longhand forces you to be more selective and to process the material a little bit more different. Another study was conducted at the University of Waterloo, and it found that people who create simple, quick drawings are better able to remember a list of words than people who simply write words down. So for example, they would have people write down like a grocery list, and they had some people, they wrote the words down repeatedly, so they would write apple, apple, apple. But then they had another group where they just drew a simple, didn't even have to look good, picture of an apple. And then it went on to like bananas and carrots and steak or anything like that. And the people who drew the pictures out remember twice as much as information than the people who got to write the word over and over again. Just creating a four second drawing was enough to help retention. This suggests that we needn't consider ourselves artistic geniuses um, in order to benefit from drawing in class. And I could tell you, I have one friend, she has not an artistic bone in her body, but she started doing this and she's actually gotten better and you have to remember, don't be judgy against yourself. Just keep it simple. Some little simple stick figures to help create that memory. And remember, don't get sucked into the drawing um, so that you're not listening. If you're focused on more of the picture, that's taking away from being actively listening. And the cool thing is, this is uh, doodling helps to prevent zoning out and it causes you to listen at a different level. This is the whole reason why I got into visual note taking. Guys, I am a grown adult and I still zone out if I had to sit still. I'm a very fidgety person. And I realized this when I went to church and I was constantly falling asleep at church. Sorry. Um, I could get all the rest in the world and I still would fall asleep. Then one day I start uh, brought my sketchbook to church and I started doodling and I realized I was able to stay awake and remember everything that was said in the sermon. I've also taken this on to do at uh, meetings or anytime I have to go to a conference, I come back remembering so much more because I'm doing my visual note taking. Um, so anytime like a, this is more for the teachers, but rather than scold students for drawing pandas and band logos in the margins of their textbooks, I. I'm trying to encourage teachers to let you guys benefit from doing visual note taking. To ensure you or a student are focused and listening, see if the lecture can be repeated back with the notes. If your teacher asks you, can you repeat the what I just said through looking at your pictures and you're able to do it, that means you're doing a good job. If you start drawing like fairies and unicorns and your teacher's talking about the Civil War, that you might not be t entirely engaged in the lecture. So make sure when you're doing this, it's creating a memory for that, not just um, zoning out. That's not the point of visual note taking. You do need to create a visual library. 
Don't get caught up in a difficult drawing. Move on and utilize the drawings you have in your visual library. So like, if you need to draw a picture of a computer, just do a simple one. And it takes some time. I, at first, didn't know how to draw like explosions or to try to show that people were revolting. And it took a while for me to um, build it up. I'm going to provide you guys with the little suggestion visual library and you guys can pick things that you think you would actually use. It's taken me a long time to get to the level I am at. Here are some examples of my visual notes. If you guys see in the book, I cannot just sit and read a book. I won't remember the information. Now keep in mind, these are my own books. Don't write in your library books or books you borrow from other people. But I, when I purchase a book, I write throughout all of it. The book right here is a book I'm reading on microbe hunters and it's like the discovery of medicine throughout history and science. If I were to read something like this on my uh, without the visual notes, I won't remember any of it. But when I create these memories of doodling in my books that I own, I'm able to remember so much more. And me just flipping to the page and looking at that microscope or looking about the note I wrote about the Invisible College brings a abundant amount of knowledge back to what I had read. Also, you guys see, I have filled up probably about 20 sketchbooks and I take my sketchbooks to my meetings and conferences because I'm sitting there and I'm putting images with what's being said and me just flipping to that page, I remember so much more of what was being said. At the end of this, I am going to have you guys uh, watch this video from Khan Academy about Andy Warhol's soup can, and I want you guys to try this visual note-taking with it. Also, I want you guys to watch the TED Talks Rachel Smith doodling in class. I do have some questions pertaining to her lecture, just because she gives you a really good idea about what visual note-taking is all about. Here's some more information if you guys are interested. Feel free to email me and ask any questions. Thanks so much, guys. Hope you guys enjoy it. And remember, this is just so you guys to discover if this is for you. It might not be for everybody. Some of us are very visual learners, and you might discover this is a new way for you to do this. If it doesn't work for you, it's okay. We are just exploring and trying to see how we learn best. Have a